The fragility is too damn high. Oh my goodness. So I have to say, I don't know what's going on with these people. My running theory is that due to the fragility of their upbringing, of their ancestral past, this leads to the, to the wickedness that they have and the hatred, which causes a willful ignorance. That's my running theory. Because upon discovering the truth of their actions, of their behaviors, of the systems that they have created, they are now left with two options. Either you have to do something and dismantle this, or you allow it, uh, the wickedness to continue on. And I think many of them do not want to be faced with that moral dilemma because that will cause a crisis on many of them. So that is where we get this fragility that's going on. And what I'm referencing is this amazing documentary that I just saw, and it's called Stamped from the Beginning. And what it goes over essentially is exactly what it says. Stamped from the beginning, talking about blackness, the concept of whiteness, where this comes from, how it's played out in history and up until you know present time. This right here, these uncomfortable truths, as I'll say, leads to fragility. And this takes place, this manifests itself due to the outrage that you have many of these, you know, these uh, house individuals and these, these, these complete racists are talking about. And it's regarding a clip of Ibram Kennedy. Now, I don't care what you think about Ibram, okay, and what he's done in this past. I'm just letting you know that the documentary was amazing. And in the statements that he's about to give, he's 100% accurate. Having said that, there's a clip that's circulating that is causing, you know, many, many uh, 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 people to be fragile, I'll say. And he's talking about, hey, how whiteness prevents white people from, uh, uh, from connecting to humanity. I, I don't think uh, white uh, people worldwide have really reckoned with how much their own personal identity is shaped by constructions of whiteness. And the lie detector test determined you're telling the truth. And, and how much um, that construction of whiteness uh, prevents uh, white people from uh, connecting to humanity. In other words, uh, recognizing that uh, when, you, when you recognize that you are part and parcel of humanity. In other words, you're not over humanity, right? Uh, it, it allows you to really be able to connect to people who don't look like you, who have kinky hair, who have dark skin, uh, and to see yourself in them. And it's whiteness that prevents that, right? And, and when you're not able to see yourself uh, in other human beings, that creates all sorts of problems. And this has caused people, okay, this has caused the Sambos as well as the racists to lose their mind. He said that white people haven't taken the time or the stock to d understand just how they're benefiting from their whiteness. As if being white makes you evil, right? And that's just simply not the case. His entire premise is that if you do not mirror the prescriptions of Ibram X. Kendi, then you are, in fact, a racist. And he says that his fellow Americans are generally white supremacists. They, they're so ignorant. And once again, it's a willful ignorance because he's obviously talking about more complex ideas, which is actually explained in the documentary. And I find it ironic because people claiming it's anti-white, the documentary, which none of them have seen, mind you, a, a, a quarter pounder, you had, what was it, the, the black conservative and his, his goofy self. You had Ben Shapiro talking about it. You have a litany of these individuals coming out and saying, oh, this is racist, this is racist, this is racist. And it's funny because if you would just watch the documentary, right, if you just seen it, you would understand that in fact, it's the opposite. What it goes on to say is that in many cases, they were scared of a unity between uh, the, 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 white, the white servant 
and the black slaves. This whole concept of marrying black people, the image of black people and slaves to be one, that's relatively new. Because when, they, when he talks about when it comes to the Slavs, if you think about the Slavs, they weren't Africans. That's not what was happening. But the reason due for, for Africans being such in high demand is that it was harder for them to blend in to, to, you know, into their surroundings. It was hard for them because it's easy to point them out. That the original, quote, slave, when people thought about that, that original slave, it wasn't people who looked like me. And this actually uh, goes, you know, uh, echoes what I said in my previous video, talking about, hey, there's one group of people that cannot, uh, you know, pass as white. That is black people. Asians can, Hispanics can, uh, you know, other groups can. That is one group we can't do. And he talks about the fear they had of essentially, you know, the, the, the poor black and the poor white coming together and fighting the powers that be. Whether you're from the South, North, East, or West, or whether you're a Negro, hillbilly, or Yankee, we're gonna stand here and fight together. And the only way to, 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 to bypass that, the only way to thwart that from happening was creating this concept of whiteness, where now you have these poor whites, and we see this in present day, where they, ha they think they are greater than everyone else. They think they're greater than black people simply due to the color of their skin, because they've managed to monetize that. They've managed to make themselves feel, feel superior simply from having white skin. And if you look as far as the definitions of white and black and how it's evolved over time throughout this country and how it's formed our opinions, how it's formed, uh, 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 like I said, the images that we have been marred, okay? That goes on to talk about when it comes to crime where they have now coupled crime and blackness as one, as one. And they did that during slavery when it came to laws and the regulations and where all of this stems from. Now, obviously, that's a lot to take in. That's a lot to take in. But as I said before, this fragility that is on display, combine that with hatred, because you have to understand, there has to be a hatred uh, for you not to educate yourself. There has to be. If someone's telling you, hey, that is inaccurate. This is the truth, check this out. And you're saying, no, you, there has to be a hatred. Someone's telling you your way of thinking, what you are doing right now is negatively impacting a specific group of people, black people. You are causing harm to this community. This is how you go about alleviating that harm. And you say no, well, then that's just blatant wickedness. You combine that wickedness, like I said, that manifests itself in willful ignorance. That is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with people Right, where it's just, -uh, uh, 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 uh. It's, it's this arrogance. And I see this in the political arena time and time and time again, where it's this bold ignorance that they have, where they speak as if what they're saying is truth, and there's no data, nothing, to substantiate th their claims and assertions. But they go with a big chest out. And it, 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 I don't know, it, it, I'm just bewildered by it in some cases. Because I'm like, how can you have this much confidence and have nothing of substance to say. I don't understand. Like you have these people saying, well, that's racist. I'm like, nothing the man said is racist. It's just a, a more complex subject that you're not willing to educate yourself on. That's what you have to understand. As black people, what we have to understand is that there are many out there, not all, because there are some John Browns out there. There are some people who would help get this documentary made. Hey, let me lend you a hand. What you're saying I think is powerful and needs to be spread out there. Absolutely. But it's also extremely important that when these people come to help, that you don't screw them over. But at the same time, you have to understand there are also a group of people who do not want to know. They do not care because they have hatred in their hearts. They have come here to kill, steal, and destroy. Imagine you have built this whole uh, concept of what the world is and that black people are just lazy. If they just worked hard, you know, th they'd be fine. And then you have someone who is telling you that's not true. And if you look at this scenario, look at this example, look at this and this, well, think about that. There's a cognitive dissonance happening. That is what's happening. You're these people are facing a cognitive dissonance. So it breaks their mind. They can either forego everything that they believed and have been raised in some cases 
to, to know is true or they can face reality. It boils down to, hey, you take the red pill or you take the blue pill. Many of these people do not want to be unplugged because then that puts them in an uncomfortable and unsavory position. They then acknowledge, hey, this country has screwed over these people significantly, which is why it is crucial for black people. We have got to, we've got to organize, all right? We have got to organize because if we don't, we are gonna be at the beck and call of these fragile, wicked, evil individuals. Anyways, guys, that's the video. Let me know what you guys think. Whether or not you believe, look, look, that is racist, okay? He judging me off the curl of my skin, saying I'm not in touch with humanity. That is racist. Um, <laughs> or if you happen to believe, um, no, he's not talking about white people, that all white people are detached from humanity. We're talking about as far as this concept of whiteness, being pure, being good, being right, being uh, without sin, okay? Being, uh, uh, when you think of crime, hey, they, didn't, they don't do crime. We look at, uh, you, you have judges talking about, that looks like a criminal. That's the concept that he's talking about. And I think they know this. That's, the, that's what irritates me. That's where it comes down to this intellectual uh, dishonesty, where you're just wicked. You're just evil. And you wanna stay evil. You know what he's talking about. You know exactly what he's talking about. But you use this to exploit and manipulate and misconstrue to sway the masses of other ignoramuses. And that's wicked. That's vile. That's disgusting. But nevertheless, if you happen to disagree, and I'm sure there's some fragile individuals out there, you're more than welcome to call in during Disagreement Day, which is typically held Friday through Sunday. There'll be a number on screen. You call in, we do good out. Either or, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, comment. I expect a bunch of fragility in the comments. Oh, Lucas, you changed. Oh, Lucas, you're racist now. What happened to you? Um, and I expect some actual civil ones and you know intelligent ones as well. Um, be sure to subscribe, share, Oh, that fun stuff. Till next time, guys, be amazing.